I can also use uh, the point of my brush to adjust some of the shapes in my painting. Hi, I'm Angela Fair. Here on my channel, I'm all about helping you to become your own favorite watercolor artist with techniques to teach you and help you grow your skills and inspiration to empower you and get you painting from your heart. This month is World Watercolor Month and we're celebrating all month by really exploring the beauty of watercolor. All through the month of July, I'm teaching beginner techniques in a heart-led learning style. This is a style where we focus on the process, on creating a warm and welcoming, a creative environment. I believe you can grow your skills while learning to paint from your heart and encouraging your creativity to flow. And that's what we're doing in this Learn Watercolor the Heart-Led Way series. Every week here on YouTube, I have free lessons for you through the month of July, and I'm rolling out the brand new lessons in my course, Learn Watercolor the Heart-Led Way. You can find out how to join that course in the description below the video. Today's tutorial is all about painting flowers. We're going to use a wet on dry technique and a wet in wet style. Does that sound confusing? It's gonna be super fun. We're gonna paint a fun flower in this little demonstration. And this is using a wet on dry technique uh, slash wet and wet. It's really a wet and wet technique on dry paper, if that makes sense. Um, it will when we're done this with this lesson. Uh, we're gonna start just by wetting our paper and painting a flower shape. And I like to use the side of my brush and just create kind of a, well, it's kind of a cup shape with my watercolor, with my water and my watercolor brush. Doesn't have to be, in fact, it's, it's better if it's not a perfect cup shape. It needs, it's nice to have a little bit of messy messiness there. I think you can maybe see a little bit of that, nice and shiny wet. Then I'm gonna use the point of my brush and pull a line down to be my stem, and I made it a little wobbly. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then the side of my brush again to create that teardrop shape for a leaf. Let's throw a leaf on this side too. I'm using the point and the side of the brush to create those shapes. Now we're gonna go into our watercolor paint. I've already moistened my palette so the paint is uh, eager to release onto the paper. I'm gonna start with some opera pink. And I want my brush to be full of rich pigment. You can actually see the color on there. It's a juicy saturation so that when it touches that wet paper, it just wants to run across the page. And if your paint is not doing that, not flowing that in that way, you might need a little more water in your wet area or you might need to upgrade your paper. If you're using paper that's not 100% cotton, it doesn't like to release in the same way. Um, this is quinacridone magenta. We're gonna add some of that as well. And it's gonna push in and flow. Look at how that whooshes across the paper. And it's already trickling down. It's following the path of least resistance. The more water we have on the paper, the more our paint's gonna move. I'm gonna add just a touch of yellow as well, a really light touch little flick just to add just something else into the painting let some of that color flow and then we're going to go to our green stem i'm using green gold for this and i'm not going to start right where the stem meets the flower i'm going to start a little lower here so that if the green gold wants to rush and spread out you can see it doing it down here it doesn't necessarily take over the flower and I, I am gonna let those colors mingle. Now we're gonna add a little bit of fun bright color with cobalt teal. And feel free to use whatever colors you think are most pleasing. These are the colors that I enjoy using in almost all of my paintings. And we're gonna just touch those colors in as well. And already you can see this lovely vibrant flower emerge on the paper. It's kind of pretty. We're gonna add even more to make it pretty. And at this point, now that I've put color in pretty much every wet area of the paper, I want to start uh, directing that color a little bit. I'm going to be the maestro and cause my orchestra to play in unison and in harmony. So we're going to, oops, and sometimes make drips. Uh, I'm going to coax some of this cobalt teal with a really light touch and a fine point brush down to mingle with the cobalt teal and the green gold just a little bit more. And you can see they make a lovely green together. I'm gonna dot a tiny pop of cobalt teal in there just to see what it will do. I can also use uh, the point of my brush to adjust some of the shapes in my painting. Maybe I wanna create some lines 
to, I don't know, harmonize with the shape in the flower. Just a little bit of line can give me some details that pull the eye across the painting. And up in my flower, which I've neglected a bit, I'm going to see if I can add a little bit more opera pink and maybe create a watermark or two to add that feeling of fl fluffy petals. And a little bit of line there as well. This is a really good exercise. If you're a new painter, you can paint a lot of these fairly quickly. It only takes a few minutes and a little bit of paper. And look how pretty that is. We get to see how colors mix organically. We haven't done a lot of stirring with the brush. We get to see the wet and wet effects. Uh, I've got areas of the painting that are quite dry. They're drying very quickly. Other areas that are really juicy and moist, which gives me edges and watermarks that will create texture inside of my flower shape. Letting those colors mix and mingle in the wet flower shape, such a great introduction into loose watercolor painting. This is what makes me come alive. I love seeing those colors mix on their own. I just try to encourage them just a little bit. Once this is dry, I could decide to add more details or I could just leave it beautifully simple and understated just like this. Oh, that's not paint water. Don't forget you can get your World Watercolor merchandise at worldwatercolormonth.com. Check out the souvenir shop for your own World Watercolor Month merch.